Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Richard Cruz, and joining us today from the Australian Army is Lieutenant General Brian Ashley Power, who is who's joining us today for his last official duty in uniform, retiring after nearly 40 years' service in the Australian Army. General Power entered the Royal Military College in Duntroon in 1975 and is a veteran of campaigns in Afghanistan, Iraq, Bougainville and East Timor. He is a recipient of the Conspicuous Service Cross and was appointed a member of the Order of Australia in 2006 and an officer of the Order of Australia in 2012. Since 2011, he has served as the Chief of Joint Operations Command. General Power, we thank you and your family for your service. You have served your nation with distinction and we wish you every success in the future. We welcome the veterans who have served and those that are still serving and the families that support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association and RSL Victoria who are here with us today to lay wreaths at the base of the Pool of Reflection. And we also welcome those members watching the broadcast of this ceremony around Australia. Thank you for your ongoing support of the last post ceremony. This evening we're also joined by students who will be laying wreaths on behalf of the following schools. Lindisfarne Anglican School, Terranora, New South Wales. Perthville Public School, Perthville, New South Wales. Could I ask you to please stand and join in singing the National Anthem. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families, friends and Australians could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and other operations over more than a century. But first we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest, Reeds or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the pool of reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Corporal William Irving Boone. William Irving Boone was born on the 22nd of July 1891 in Queenstown, South Australia, to Isaac and Mary Boone. He grew up in the Albert Park area and attended Alberton Public School and later Murden College. He was also a chorister at St Margaret's Church in Woodville. After leaving school, he was employed as a clerk at the Australian Implement Company and then the Savings Bank of South Australia. He became a well-known sportsman in South Australia. During the summer months, he played cricket for the Port Adelaide Cricket Club and in the winter played football for the Port Adelaide Magpies Football Club. In 1914, Boone was a member of the Magpies Premiership winning team, which went through the season undefeated. They went on to defeat Victorian Football League Premier's Carlton to become Australian champions. The 1914 team would later become known as the Immortals. When the First World War began, Boone tried twice to enlist for service in the AIF, but was rejected both times on medical grounds. He tried again on the 11th of November 1915 and was accepted. Boone was initially allotted to the 10th Battalion, but in September was transferred to the reinforcement pool for artillery units. He was soon sent to Melbourne to join the newly raised 31st Battery of the 8th Field Artillery Brigade. In May 1916, he embarked aboard the transport ship Medic and on arriving in England in July, went into camp at Penham Downs. Following a brief illness, Boone rejoined his unit and embarked for France. By the end of January 1917, the 31st Battery was in the Armentieres sector. Boone's battery saw its first major action in May, when as part of the 3rd Division's artillery it supported the infantry attack on Messines. Later, Boone and his unit took part in the 3rd Battle of Ypres, and the battery moved on to Zonnebecker in October to support the Australian attack on Brudenstein and Polkapel. Later that year, the battery moved to a quieter sector and spent time out of the line to rest. In early February 1918, Boone was given a two-week leave pass to Paris. During this time, he wrote what would be his final letter to his parents. When the German Spring Offensive began in late March 1918, the 31st Battery moved to the Somme and went into action near Red Mines, later moving to new positions near Bonnet. On the morning of the 24th of April, the Germans launched an attack, preceded by a fierce artillery barrage on Villa's Bretonneur. The dugout in which Boone had been sleeping received a direct hit, killing him instantly. He was laid to rest in the Bonnet Communal Cemetery extension. His name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my right, along with more than 60,000 others from the First World War. The photograph displayed shows Boone amongst the soldiers of the 31st Battery. There is no individual photograph in the collection to display beside the pool of reflection. This is but one of many stories of courage and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Corporal William Irving Boone and all those Australians who have given their lives in the service of our nation. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Mm -hmm.